you know, I hate those headlines. Can I just say that right up front? Um, dividing, splitting, um, tearing apart, tearing itself apart. And you've, you've probably seen all of those headlines, uh, of which none is true. Uh, we've been very intentional about using the word separation. Uh, that's a mutual understanding, a mutual agreement. And nobody's leaving anything. Nobody asked anyone to leave. Uh, it was an agreement that it was time after all the hurt and the pain that we've caused one another. Uh, there are times where just relationships need to go their separate ways. There's also still going to be probably some opportunities for us to be in ministry together. So we'll never be we'll never leave one another, but we might have separate ways and separate expressions of our ministry. So those splintering, splitting, dividing, uh, those are not really accurate headlines. Uh, and uh, I really don't like uh, to use that word, although I have to catch myself off and myself uh, to not to use the word leaving or dividing, but in fact, use the word separating, which is much truer to the agreement. Uh, this is a group that uh, has really um, no authority to gather. Uh, but it was a group who believes and loves uh, the good news of Jesus and believes that the world needs to hear it. And it really began with Bishop Yambasu, who is a resident bishop in Sierra Leone, who after February of 19 saw the hurt sort of the carnage on the floor uh, of the general conference and said, we just can't live like this anymore. And it was he who first took that first courageous step in gathering groups of people with very differing opinions theologically uh, in a room. And from that then was, uh, was decided that maybe that group needed to be, continue their conversations, but maybe be a, bit, a little bit smaller. And so thus came this group of 16 that evolved out of that initial courageous step uh, that Bishop Yambasu took. These are people that represent the, the spectrum. There's the right, the left, and the in-between. And these are just people who love, who love the church and don't want to continue to do harm to one another and want to honor the convictions that we all have. And so um, it ended up um, in this group of 16 that uh, somebody had a contact, somebody knew somebody who knew somebody uh, that knew Ken Feinberg. And oh my goodness, uh, what a gift he has been to this group and to the church. Uh, if you don't know Ken Feinberg, you need to go Google uh, Ken Feinberg because uh, he's a Jewish man who loves God and loves to see the goodness come out of people. And that was what he did for us. He did it all pro bono. This is, this is not a, a, a cheap endeavor uh, on a regular basis uh, for people who engage him. Uh, but it, he took the time to spend with us, learn who we were, on the first meeting, he knew who these, who these people were that he was facing, and he knew that this was a really important step uh, that we were taking. So he has led us every step of the way. And um, no, we're not a Roundup, we're not Boeing, we're not all of those other groups that he's worked with, but we're the United Methodist Church, and we're a people who love Jesus and want to make sure that we spread the Methodist witness in a way that um, really that we can be proud of. And after the February 19 General Conference, our witness was really damaged. Uh, and we need to reclaim the Methodist witness. And one way to do that, I would say, is this separation. It is not something that, it kind of pains me to even talk about it. It is not something that I wanted. I worked very hard last year to, um, to keep us together. And um, this, is, this is really not the ideal way for me personally. But I do think it is a way for us to be able to maximize the Methodist witness in as many places as possible in the world as possible. And it's just called for this time. And I think that for all 16 people to agree that this was the right way um, as we took another bold step. Uh, this is a bold step. Um, and I pray that we might be able to model for some of the other denominations that uh, have gone through this or are going through it, that we might model a gracious way uh, through this. As you know, grace is a foundational um, understanding of who we are as Methodists. Uh, why not it be an expression even in this time of separation? Yeah. 
You know, we reached that moment on December 17th in the afternoon. And after much back and forth and um, lots of conversation, and we got to that point and it was almost like, is this real? Are we there? And then, like good Methodists that we are, we started planning for how to, how to do this. And then someone in the room said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Something just happened here. Can we just stop for a minute and acknowledge what's just occurred? And I would say it brought tears to my eyes to reach that moment when 16 of us could agree on some really fundamental things that I would say before we would have never even come to an agreement. So we took that moment and just, we prayed. Um, here we are in a law office in downtown Washington, D.C. I hope they've prayed there before too. But uh, we took that moment and just really uh, thank the Spirit for stirring in such powerful ways around us. Uh, there were a couple moments of, of uh, when we agreed and it's like, oh, let's mark that one down um, because that, you know, just to, to be in a room where most of the time we've disagreed and all of a sudden now we're coming to some agreement. And I would say that in the agreement, it's not perfect. And I, I don't know that it's 100 percent and anybody thinks, oh, I won. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's that way. But that's how mediation works. It is give and take and give and take and push and pull. And I think what we ended up with was, uh, uh, as imperfect as I might be, because we're imperfect people, uh, it's as close to a, uh, another step that we might take again, that we, we can be faithful to who God has called us to be without um, demeaning one another, without uh, sort of leaving behind what we really believe are our convictions. We're all good people. There are no bad people in that room. Um, so we all had very deep convictions about certain things. <laughs> Well, first of all, right now, there is no action to be taken. Uh, the, 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 the protocol, the agreement has to be shaped in legis into legislation. And that's the hard work for some folks right now. Uh, there is a provision in the Book of Discipline that allows an annual conference to bring legislation to the General Conference 45 days prior to the start of the General Conference. So there are people working on that now. It's going to require special sessions of, of annual conferences, but that's, in, that's been in the works. But for now, there's nothing for a local church or an annual conference to do other than to really begin to discern where they might find themselves uh, in the short future ahead of us. Uh, if, it, uh, if the the agreement, if the protocol and the legislation uh, is in fact accepted and received uh, and voted on by the General Conference, uh, if a church wants to remain a United Methodist Church, it will have to do nothing. If an annual conference wants to remain in the United Methodist Church, it will have to do nothing. It remains United, doesn't have to take a vote. Uh, if you want to separate from the United Methodist Church, whether you are uh, a local congregation or an annual conference, that will require votes. Uh, and that is in, I would just refer you back to the FAQ and to the press release and to the agreement because it would take too long for me to try to explain that now. But there are ways if you, in fact, you want to separate from what we're calling the post United Methodist Church, there are, there's a process for that. Uh, but if you want to remain United Methodist, no one has to take a vote to do anything. And, um, I, I, my, my hope is um, that uh, people who have that conviction that they have to leave, there is a way to do this, but um, I am, uh, I'm hopeful that people will find a place at the end of this where their greatest expression of ministry can be lived out. At the end of the day, um, agreements, no agreements, uh, FAQs, no FAQs. Uh, the fact that there are still people that need to hear the good news of Jesus, that has not changed. That has not changed. So if there's one word that I would share um, is that, uh, I, I, say, I said to someone the other day, protocol, shemotocol. It doesn't really, it, 
what really matters right now is that we continue to really be um, a light to a hurting world.